Welcome to our channel Learning Math. In this video, we're going to learn a sample question for official exams geometry in grade 9. As you see, we have two circles, circle C of center O and radius 2R, and circle C prime of center O prime and radius R that are tangent externally at a point A. The common external tangent for these two circles cuts the circle C at the point C and the circle C prime at the point D. The common internal tangent for these circles at A cuts the external tangent at the point E. Now we're going to prove that E is the midpoint of CD. Before reading any question, we should exactly analyze the given before solving. Why? Whenever we have tangents, there are two rules that are very important to keep in mind. First of all, sure tangent is perpendicular to the radius. Second, whenever we have circles and more than one tangent, we should keep in mind that tangents issued from the same point towards the same circle are equal. If you know something, here we have EC and EA are both tangents to the circle C. These tangents are both issued from the point E. So we can say that EC equals EA, they are tangents from the same point to the same circle. Also we have here ED and EA are both tangents from the same point E to the same circle which is C prime, so they are equal. Now we can say that also EA is equal to ED. So we can deduce that EA is equal to EC and equal to ED. In particular, we have EC is equal to ED. Well, they are equal. Something else, E belongs to the segment CD given the two tangents intersect at E. So they are collinear. Now we can say that E is the midpoint of CD. This is very important. Well, now what's the nature of the quadrilateral O prime B C D? If you know something, as I told you at the beginning, tangents are perpendicular to the radii. So the tangent CD is perpendicular to each of the two radii, OC and O prime D. Here we have 290 degrees. Also we have given that O prime B is perpendicular to OC. Well, how many 90 degrees are we having in this quadrilateral? Aren't they three? So we can say that the quadrilateral O prime B, C, D is a rectangle. Well, something very important. We have just proved a rectangle. Before reading any question, we should analyze the given and analyze each part. What are we proving? We have just proved that it's a rectangle, so we can say that the opposite sides, as you see here, are equal to each other. We have O prime. D is a radius of the circle C prime, so it's equal to R. Well, the opposite sides of the rectangle are equal to each other, then BC is equal also to R. Well, but OC is a radius in the circle C, which has a radius 2R. If OC is equal to R and BC is equal R, what should be the remaining part for OB? Isn't it R? Here we can deduce that BC is equal to B. O. Well, they are asking us so that O prime C O is an isosceles triangle at O prime. Something very important. We have just proved that B is the midpoint of O C. As you see, we have perpendicular at B, which is O prime B. Isn't it the perpendicular issued through the midpoint of this segment? So we have perpendicular bisector. Whenever we have perpendicular bisector, we will have equidistant. Now we can say that O prime C is equal to O prime O equidistant. Thus the triangle O prime O C is isosceles at O prime. Now what's the nature of the quadrilateral O prime O B D? If you know something, we have these two opposite sides are equal. Each of them is equal to R. Something else, we have OB and CR collinear. OC is perpendicular to the tangent CD. Also here we have O prime D is perpendicular to this tangent, it's a radius. The two sides 
are perpendicular to the same straight line. So we can say that they are parallel. Then OB is parallel to O prime D. They are perpendicular on the same straight line which is CD. Now we can say that O prime D and OB are equal and parallel. Thus we have a parallelogram. Its two opposite sides are equal and parallel. Something else. Here we have, if we produce OO prime, it will cut the tangent CD at F. And if we produce EA, it will cut the tangent, sorry, it will cut O prime D at G. Now we're going to prove that O prime is the midpoint of OF. How to do it? When they ask us to prove midpoint, first of all, we should think about converse of midpoint theorem. How to do it? We need to prove that O prime is the midpoint of O F. Something very important. If we think about it, here we have a straight line passing through O prime, as you see, which is O prime B. Isn't it parallel to C D as opposite sides of the rectangle? Also, they are perpendicular on the same line, which is O C. So here we have parallel. And we have just proved that B is the midpoint of OC. Now, can't we say that in the triangle OCF, we have midpoint and parallel issued through this midpoint that will cut the other side through its midpoint by converse of midpoint theorem. So, we can say that O prime is the midpoint of OF by converse of midpoint theorem. Again, we have parallel issued through the midpoint of one of the sides, then it will cut the other side through its midpoint by converse of midpoint theorem. Well, show that E, O prime, is perpendicular to G, F. This is also very important. We should keep in mind all the perpendiculars in the figure. If we take the triangle E, G, F, as you see here, we have the first height, which is FA. Why its height? We have tangent, which is perpendicular to the radius O prime A, and all of them are collinear. So here is the first height in this triangle, which is FA. The second height, as you see, GD is the second height. We have here tangent, so we have perpendicular. Height is issued from the vertex to the side facing it, perpendicular. Well, Two heights are intersecting at the point O prime. Thus, we can say that O prime is said to be the orthocenter of the triangle E, G, F. So, the third side uh, line that will pass from the vertex through this orthocenter will be the third height in this triangle, which is the height uh, from E passing through E prime, uh, sorry, O prime and perpendicular to G, F. Whenever we want to prove that a line is perpendicular to the other, we should think about a triangle including two heights intersecting at the same point. The third one that passes from the vertex through this point will be the third height. Now something which is very important, let's prove that the triangles O prime D F and O prime A G are congruent. If you know something, we have shape x vertically opposite angles. We have two 90 degrees. Also, we have O prime D is radius and O prime A is radius. They are radii of the same circle, C prime, so they are equal to each other. Now, we have just proved that these triangles are congruent as they asked us. If you know something, we have homologous sides that are A, G and D, F. Why we want these homologous sides? They are asking us to prove that A, D is parallel to G, F. Something very important. We have just proved that E, A is equal to E, D tangents from the same point to the same circle. Also, we have proved that A, G is equal to D, F as homologous sides. Can't we say that? EA over AG is equal to ED over DF. 
we have a proportionality size, proportional size, then we can say by converse of Thales theorem, we say AD is parallel to GF. Something else, if we want to use other method, we have just proved that EO prime is perpendicular to GF. Something else. We have here equidistant. EA is equal to ED tangents from the same point to the same circle. Also, O prime A equals O prime D radii of the same circle. Can't we say that here we have also equidistant? Now we can deduce that. Uh, sorry, we can deduce that. E, O prime is the perpendicular bisector of AD. We have two perpendicular. As you see, AD and G, F are perpendicular on the same line, which is E, O, prime. Then they are parallel to each other. So we can either prove them parallel by converse of their theorem, or we can prove that they are perpendicular on the same line. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.